Hello again, and once again I start off by, by saying that if you do like this video, please hit the thumbs up, and of course I encourage everybody to subscribe, and of course don't forget to uh, ring the bell. Now first, this particular video, um, I sort of want to dedicate it to my, to my father, who was an avid bird watcher, especially after he retired. And so, and since and since today, I'm going to, going to talk about another theme of on coins, and that is birds. I must admit, I kind of wish my kind of wish my dad could have been could have been here to help me out on this. I imagine he would have had plenty to say about the different birds that I that I show that I will show today and in future ones. It's gonna take gonna take quite a few videos actually to show the the ones that I have with birds on them there's quite a lot it's a very very popular theme um, not um, not not too surprising those birds of course have fasten have fascinated people for well for as long as there's been as long as there's been people wondering how it is how it is that birds can fly yet somehow the rest of us kind of have to stay on the ground so this is, as I say, most one of the more popular themes of coin collecting, and uh, the birds on the coins here. Many of them do represent real species of birds, but others are intended as allegorical symbols. Uh, think of the phoenix, for example. Now some lie somewhere in between, like this first example from Afghanistan. There it is. Now, it shows what appears to be a stylized golden eagle. Not sure exactly how, um, what, exactly what kind of bird it's supposed to be, but I'm guessing it is supposed to, it is supposed to be a golden eagle, something, something like that. But, uh, but it's so stylized that it really, it, it's kind of hard to tell. Though, I, the reason why I'm making the guess that it's a golden, that it's intended to be a golden eagle, is because the golden eagle is the official bird of Afghanistan. Just like uh, in the United States, the bald eagle is the is the official bird. But of course, I'll talk more about the United States in in a future video. Now, next is a ten cent from Australia. Now, the Australia. We have in this case. This is a um, a superb lyre bird, is what it's called. It is noteworthy for its long, elaborate tail, and it's one of the world's largest songbirds, as well. And again, it's hard to make out the details. What you're seeing, what you're seeing in, on, in the picture here, is mostly the the tail. The body and the head is just below the is just below the number ten. And uh, as I say, world's largest songbird, so no surprise really, songbirds actually first evolved in Australia about 56 million years ago. Also noteworthy is that this particular bird is apparently very good at mimicry. Um, said to be even the best in the world, perhaps even better than the African grey parrot. So, uh, but again, I don't know if you can if you're able if you're allowed to actually catch one of these keep it in a cage and starts and start teaching it poly one a cracker i'm guessing it's probably protected and you can't catch them so don't now next um austria austrian coins are <clears throat> uh, especially of the habsburg empire have a double-headed eagle which is what we got here now now again it's kind of oh, it's kind of hard to see there but i'll just so you can see we got an eagle design, and the eagle has two heads. There's a crown, one crown, and there's two heads just below the crown. And it is this is a symbol then of the uh, of the of the Hatsbury Empire, the symbol of royalty. The, this bird, of course, is obviously allegorical. Uh, no two-headed bird ever existed, except perhaps as mutations, which would not have survived much longer after hatching. However, the uh, two-headed eagle actually became a royal symbol in many parts of Eastern Europe. Uh, the Russian czars also used the um, double-headed bird. And again, 
I'll talk about Russia in a future video. The next Austrian coin is a 100 Kronen. And there's this little copper coin here, slightly smaller than an American or Canadian dime. It's only 17 millimeters in size. And you can make out there a bird's head. There it is. Yeah. Now, it is an eagle, um, some kind of eagle. I'm not sure what type. Uh, it is dated 1924, which is interesting because uh, earlier that same year, uh, the, the 1924 100 Kronen was a gold coin. It had almost an ounce of gold in it. So this tells me that clearly Austria must have suffered from the same hyperinflation that uh, Germany was suffering from at around the same time. Uh, please check out my hyperinflation in Brazil video for, for more information about that. And the last Austrian coin shows an allegorical eagle. This one, though, is just one head. Uh, again, the double, the, because the double eagle, double-headed eagle was the, um, was the symbolized the royal family, the double-headed eagle fell out of use in Austria with the end of the royal family in 1919. So, just one head. And, uh, I don't know, some people say that two heads are better than one. Mm, I beg to differ. Next, Barbados. Now, Barbados, like Australia, has a bird on its 10-cent coin. There's, there's the coat of arms. Here's the bird. Now, the bird is a... Uh, is a t uh, apparently, is called a laughing gull. And uh, like, like uh, Australia, it is not a symbol, but is simply an example of the wildlife you may see if you visit, um, visit Bermuda, uh, Barbados. And so again, the, that's a laughing gull, it's called. Now, Bermuda, the next one. <coughs> this is a sa same idea. We got a, another, uh, another bird here, and this is... Uh, this is a called a Bermuda longtail or white white tailed tropic bird, depending on who you're talking to. Now, if you saw my video "Pig on the Penny," you, you may remember this coin. I probably would have I showed it at that time as an example of Burmese coins putting putting animals on them. Not Burmese, sorry, Bermudian coins, not Burmese. <laughs> Now, the next one is from Bosnia. Now, Bosnia has an interesting coin here. It's a two convertible maka is the, uh, is the denomination of this coin. Uh, the bird on it is a rock dove, what uh, most people would refer to as a pigeon. However, it is intended as a peace dove, which means it is an all, it would be all white in color, not the two-tone gray that one associates with most rock doves or pigeons, as they might be called. It is carrying also what is most likely an olive branch, another symbol of peace. Uh, boom. And on, on we go here to Botswana. Now, Botswana has three different coins with um, birds on them. First of all, this one here is a bird, this is a bird called a turaco, that is spelled T-U-R-A-C-O, uh, not with a K, it has a C. Uh, the bird, however, uh, from what I've been learning about it, is that it doesn't fly very well, but it does run very fast. So that, that's uh, one of the birds from Botswana. And the next one is a uh, is a bird. Uh, it's called a it's a red it's a red bell real it's a red billed horn bill is what it's called. And I apologize, the patina on this coin is such that you can't really make out make out the bird. I'm sorry, I do not have a shiny example, but I did want to show show it to the best of my ability here because uh, one of the interesting things about the red billed horn bill is that uh, it is the one that uh, the Lion King's Zazu character is based on. For any of those old enough to remember Lion King. And finally, we have an, another very nice bird here. This bird is called an African fish eagle. It comes complete with a fish in its claws. 
Uh, it is very similar to the American bald eagle, in fact. It's, uh, the, big di the big difference is that the African fish eagle is a bit larger, and also the white feathers on the African eagle cover the chest area and, as, as, long, as well as the head and neck. Now, this next coin from Cambodia features a stylized rooster. What we, rooster is what we, what we see here. And the rooster is a common symbol used in many countries in the Far East, including China and Japan. Uh, now, if you've seen my video on the 20th century French coins, you'll also know that France has used the rooster as well as a symbol of the country and used it on some of their coins. And the last country today is Canada. Uh, Canada's bird coins, uh, first one was in 1967. And we start off here with a nice shiny Canadian one cent with a rock dove. Now, I'm not sure whether this is supposed to be the white peace dove or just a pesky pigeon. Uh, the other 1967 bird is this one. This is a Canada goose. Now, the... Uh, the Canada goose, while this bird is seen as one of the symbols of Canada, many Canadians and others find this bird to be a bit of a pest. They're aggressive. They chase dogs and people, especially during breeding season. And if you see any, don't feed them. Don't go near them. You feed them, more of them will come and give you more and more trouble. So the Canada goose... Uh, looks majestic when flying in the air. Looks majestic on the coin, but in real life, yeah, I prefer them to. I prefer them on coins only. The next one is a, a Canadian quarter commemorating the province of Saskatchewan. And in this, in this one, so there's uh, Saskatchewan. Written, if we can read it at the top there, Saskatchewan is not the easiest easiest name to spell, but it's on the top of the coin there. And the bird on this is a, um, is a red, uh, not red, a yellow-headed blackbird. And uh, these birds, you often will hear their grinding, cackling noise bef before you would see them. And of course, since, since uh, they are called a yellow-headed blackbird, makes per that, that's a perfect name for them. Bright yellow head and the rest of the body is black. The last circulate last of the circulating Canadian bird coins is this one. This particular coin I'm actually going to do a video in the future uh, just talking about this one because there's actually quite a lot of interesting stories behind it but I'll just give a brief overview right now. This is the one dollar coin introduced in 1987 uh, the bird on it here, while it looks like a duck because it's sitting a bit higher in the water than it perhaps should be, it is actually a loon. And therefore, as you can probably guess, uh, since it's a loon, the, uh, the bird is now called a loony. I was predicting that actually when they, when they announced the plans to introduce the coin with the loon on it, I figured, okay, yeah, they're going to be calling this coin the loony. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Even nowadays, even if you listen to the business news in Canada, instead of saying Canadian dollar, they actually use the term loony instead, as in, uh, this loony was, uh, the loony was up against the US dollar and the Japanese yen today, and so on. The other two loonies that I have here are a, spe are a special type that were struck for the, to, well, to commemorate actually, the, uh, the Winter Olympics. There's one there. The loon is flying or getting ready to fly out of the water. And you'll notice the Olympic symbol for Canada on the, on the left. And here's another one. The Olympic symbol is on the right. And it's another loon about to take off. Uh, one's from 2008 and one is from 2014. These ones are also called Lucky Loonies. And uh, again, the future video I'm going to do on the loony, I'll talk about more about why these are called Lucky Loonies. There's, <coughs> there's actually a pretty good story about it. And then finally, 
of the Can Canada has produced countless commemorative coins with birds on them. Um, fortunately, many of them are gold or even platinum for that matter and well outside my price range. But I got a few here. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I got a few here that are made of nickel plated steel with painted images. Here's one here. So painted image nickel plated steel with a paint with a painted image. And uh, these ones are they had an issue price of only $24.95 Canadian. Or should I say about 25 loonies. They uh, initially didn't sell well and many were left unsold. So the current, with the current policy at the Royal Canadian Mint being to melt down any commemorators left unsold after a certain period, the four that I have became a bit more rare and then demand increased a few years later. So this ruby-throated hummingbird, which is what, what we got here, this is the smallest bird that is native to Canada. If you want to see one, you just plant lots of red flowers in your garden and you'll, and you'll see hummingbirds. Um, this seems to be the most very, very common one. It's the only hummingbird I've ever seen in Canada. And uh, it turned out to be a pretty good investment. Uh, due, due to the demand, this one is now worth 185 Canadian dollars. So that turned, that turned out quite well. The next one was an even better investment. This is the uh, red-breasted nuthatch. And uh, this one uh, is interesting because this bird is no noted for uh, climbing down trees with its head pointed downward, which is one of the ways that it makes them easy to spot because no other bird does that. And uh, this, as I say, was the best was the best investment. It's worth about four hundred and seventy five Canadian dollars now. So yeah, at the time it was issued, it was within my budget. If I had to buy it now, I would have to say forget it. It would it would not be worth trying to buy it now. But there it is, red breasted nuthatch. They're a fairly small. They're a fairly small, cute little bird. And then we have the downy woodpecker. This this one here. Smallest woodpecker in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, and as I say, it, it behaves as you would expect any other woodpecker to expect. It uh, makes holes in trees to build, to build its nest. And uh, again, if you, if you can't see one, you can certainly hear it drumming on trees. This one is now worth 250 Canadian dollars. And again, that's the downy woodpecker. And the sound, and no, it does not say, <laughs> the sound it makes is kind of like, cheep, cheep, cheep. That's about all it makes. Kind of boring. Next, and last one, we have the Cardinal. You can see how it got its name. Lots of red. Uh, it's a popular winter bird in Canada. Um, uh, much like the British Robin. Um, in fact, both these birds, the Cardinal in Canada and the British Robin in Britain, are very popular for use on Christmas cars, as the, this is the bird that you like to see at, the, at your bird feeder in the wintertime. So in Canada, this is, this is the, uh, the Cardinal. And, uh, and this one is, uh, again, was a reason, reasonably good investment and is worth 375 Canadian dollars. So, as I say, there were about they say there were twenty four ninety five issue price. I didn't buy them intentionally as an investment. I bought them because I like them, and that's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. Commemorative coins generally are not a good investment. Buy them if you like them. I just got happened to get lucky. There are other ones that have been struck since then of uh, various other birds. I would actually like to complete the collection. Uh, but the next two, which I do not have, are still are rather expensive. So I'm not sure if I'm going to, if and when I'll scrape up the money to do that. Now, if you have any questions, uh, please post in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for any other coins that I, I should show, or, may, or perhaps themes that I, that I should show, I might be able to just might be able to do it for you. 
Uh, again, there will be more theme coins in the, in the future. I haven't decided whether I'm going whether next week I'm going to do some more female allegorical coins or perhaps maybe more ships because I still got lots of coins with those themes. So I thank you very much, everybody, and thank you very much for watching, and um, have a good evening.